All right, we are up and rolling. Uh, my name is, again, Justin Kearns with the Winchester Tourism Office. We are here at beautiful Museum of the Shenandoah Valley in Winchester, and you are? I'm Perry Matthews, the Director of Gardens at the Museum of the Shenandoah Valley, and welcome to Gardens on a nice, pretty day in April. Yeah, um, so we wanted to, uh, it's a gorgeous time to be here. Unfortunately, uh, they have to be closed to the public right now, so yes. we figured you can't come here, so we'll, uh, we'll bring it to you. We got some cool things in store today, so we're gonna do a couple of clips and, and show you some cool things, and Barry's gonna walk us around. Sure, so where we're standing is in the Grand Alley. It comes right out the back door of the house. Um, there's a small little knot garden there, or a gar knot garden is a garden. In this case, they're all little uh, uh, plantings of boxwoods that are created in patterns. And then as you look beyond that, down the Grand Alley, we have um, uh, 26 centurion crab apples. Um, and then all underneath it is flowering the grape hyacinths right now. And so the crab apples are about to, they're pretty much hitting close to peak bloom right now. And it's a good time of year for it. Um, and it's just, uh, it's a, one of the premier points when you come out of the back door of the house, you would be able to look down the alley. So it's kind of a big showstopper moment for us. This is really beautiful. And you guys do a lot of weddings here usually too, right? We often do weddings in this. Everybody likes the nice sort of linear sort of chapel-like feel of the alley. Um, we did replace these trees about four years ago. Um, so the original trees were Kwanzaa and cherries. And then in the 70s, they were torn out and replanted with a variety of pink flowering crab apple. And now um, as the crab apples started to die out, we pulled those out and replanted it with a different variety, Centurion, which is a little bit more disease resistant. Okay. Uh, still gives us the pink flowering trees that everybody likes. Um, and one of the other really sort of nifty tricks about, or nifty features about this alley is that there is a forced perspective. So where I'm standing, there's sort of a brick edging right here between on the, along the outside edge of the turf. And if you measure it from here, it's nine feet wider than if you went to the other end and measured it. Really? Across. So it makes the alley look longer than it truly is. You absolutely don't. I, I can't a, tell that. It's a very clever I, I little uh, force. So at the other end, it doesn't look quite as long. That's why I like to have people here because <laughs> it's it looks really there, right? long. <laughs> now, I, I got a question for you. We can sure. walk down here for a second. So we have this nice, uh, I, I hope I'm not pointing out something that's no. uh, in error here. But um, so we've got this nice darker kind of dark pink purple and then we've got yeah, this one, one uh, little guy right yes, here and, uh, what happened with him i'm not sure it is probably not the centurion variety it was probably mislabeled in the nursery or <laughs> something along those lines um it's just like a beauty mark on a on a on an 18th century woman's face you have to have something that really highlights the perfection of everything else so, <laughs> that's really cool i like so. it and in Lots of bees going on right now. Yes. Lots of. Uh... It's a very good time of year. We got a lot of birds singing. You can hear the the mockingbirds uh, going to town right now, and um, so it's just it's a wonderful time to be in the garden. And we're sorry people can't be here. Um, so, but we're taking a little bit more relaxed approach about trying to make sure everything is is in really nice shape. So when when we open the gardens back up, um, people will be able to enjoy the gardens quite a bit. Now, is there a story that, that there's, there's, uh, your gardening is your, is your thing, but uh, there's a lot of sculptures There's a here. lot of sculpture in the gardens that um, um, Julian Glass and Lee Taylor uh, collected as they developed the gardens between 1960 and 1990. Um, and uh, so our curatorial staff has done a fair amount of research on some of it. So we just sort of work around it. We, this one actually, the boxwoods and needs to be pruned off just a little bit. It's one of our projects we'll do this spring as we do a little bit more work as we get ready to go. Okay, and you got time to do that. Mm -hmm. So, all right, is there a story? Well, are they all labeled? Do we? No. Oh, okay, so this is just one of the many, yeah. many mm -hmm. sculptures that we have here. Yeah. One of the things I love about coming here is that so many things, and my parents love this too. My parents are really big into plants. Um, Everything is, um, not everything, but almost everything is labeled. So it's not just, you don't just look at that and go, oh, mm -hmm. that's a beautiful flower. I wonder what that is. That's a lot of work to put we labels label on all this. We label some of the plants. We're not so rigorous about labeling. At one point, there was a lot of desire. It's trying to find a balance. We don't want to feel like we're a botanical garden where we're labeling everything. Um, we want people to come in and enjoy the scenery, but if there is information, so we've done a, a, some labeling in the past. We also do plant lists. So when people come at the gatehouse, oh, really? they can pick up a list of featured okay. plants. And so sometimes you'll walk around the garden and you'll see like a number one or a number five, and you can look on the plant list and it will sort of give you an idea. Okay. So That's we, really we're cool. trying to find an easy way where people can learn more about the garden, 
but they're not overwhelmed with placard after placard after placard of, of this name and the Latin name and the family and all that other stuff that you find at Botanical Garden. But there is still a lot of information, mm -hmm. so there it's is. kind of a good blend. It's a good, it's good. So where are we going to walk now? I can, I can um, follow you. Let's go to, well, the Rose Garden is, is sort of in its early stages of getting ready. Um, roses don't really bloom for us until late May, early June, so hopefully by the time we're reopening. Uh, so, but this is the time of year that um, we do a lot of pruning back. The roses in this area are, called, are sort of old roses, so we have like a China rose and a bourbon rose back there. So they don't get pruned back, but all the roses up here are um, hybrid teas or grandifloras or uh, floribundas. And so they get a hard prune every spring. And um, so our, our uh, rose gardener has been working in here for the last couple of weeks where he comes through and takes them with they've been plants, you know, about five, six feet tall and he's pruning them all back down to about 18 inches and starting to see new growth come out. And then by June, boom, you have lots of flowers. Okay. Now I know from, from trying to grow roses in my mm -hmm. yard that uh, there's two things that absolutely love them, deer and Japanese beetles. Yes. Which I, I lost that battle many times. Um, I'm assuming the deer probably don't come in here too much. Oh no, we get a lot of problems with deer. We have 200 really? acres. Okay. The deer live on the property. And they'll come um, right on in And the... they will come in here all wow. the time. So we right. have to do a fair amount of repellent. Okay. Um, so we alternate a couple of different ones, but our primary repellent is Bobex. Um, so we spray that. And usually, unless you get a very hard downpour, it'll last a couple of weeks. Uh, so we just have to be sort of pretty diligent about uh, maintaining it. Just make it taste bad. Mm -hmm. <laughs> all right. So this is a garden that's really, the nice thing about our gardens is they are sort of rotate through the different seasons. Um, so at different times of the year, different gardens are at peak bloom. Um, so right now, Grand Alley is sort of one of your prime spaces. Rose Garden will be in June. The perennial garden here um, is in the process. We're doing a lot of weeding in here. It just sort of gets ready, but we do have some spring flowering plants in here. Obviously a lot of daffodils, little Tazetta daffodils like this. Um, and, um, and then we got a lot of spring star flower sort of blended in as well. You see the flocks that are starting to bloom. Oh, yeah. And, um, but then later as the spring goes along, we'll see a lot of other different plants coming along. So it's just a, this is a mixed flowering variety or area. So at this time of year, it's kind of slow starting. But then, it, but then as we get into May, this is really one of the prime gardens for May. Okay, great. But there's always something going on in here. There's always something going on in here. Um, and this is sort of, it's been laying dormant for a while, so we're in the process of sort of cleaning it out, weeding out all the chickweed that's in here. Uh, we're like everybody else. We have the weeds and the problems just <laughs> anybody else. Yep. Yeah, don't pay attention to this garden. Uh, <laughs> it's a statue garden. Yep. And the other big garden right now is, of course, our parterre. Oh, wow. So, so daffodils are going to town. Tulips are just starting. Uh, when, when I left on Friday, we only had a handful of tulips out, so now they're all in full bloom. The daffodils are doing, you know, gangbusters. We have a couple of different types. You can see one with sort of an orange or peachy eye and one with mm. sort of a yellow eye or center. And then um, pansies are just starting to take off a little bit. Um, along the outside edge. So this is this is a great garden to be in. And um, uh, again, you'll see a lot of bees and stuff in here. And this is a garden that changes seasonally. Um, so right now we have our spring display. Um, unfortunately, this will be all gone by the time we reopen. Right. Um, but then when um, sort of mid-May, all this comes out and then we replant in the summer display. Okay. So um, I'm trying to remember what, I know we have some salvias. Um, the gardener who, who's in charge of this area gets every year gets to design it. Basically he's designing two displays at once. So there is all the, the spring display, the spring bulb display right now. And then um, in, um, you know, like I said, for the summer, so mid-May, all this gets replanted. And, um, and then from there, it runs until frost. Wow. It's kind of a fun 
kind of a, a fun, creative yeah. place. This, this is a labor-intensive garden, of course, because <laughs> we had to change it out. And then, then in the fall, once we hit frost, then we've got to go and tear everything out and then come back in and replant the display for the spring, all these bulbs again. Wow. And um, there's probably about four or 500 different daffodils just in this bed alone. Wow. So, yeah, I remember, I think we did about seven or eight thousand daffodil uh, bulbs this year wow but not all in here but also throughout the garden but the vast majority of them end up in this bed wow that's a lot of bulbs mm -hmm. and we have some more crab apples that are really starting to bloom right now beautiful um this is one called indian magic so it's a little bit of a different variety okay Quick look up here at this. So many, so many bees yeah, flying around. a lot of bees there. around. Yeah, that's great. You guys don't have an apiary here on site. Uh, no, we've had bees. I mean, we don't have a managed beehive or anything. I'm sure we probably have some, but we don't. No one's keeping honey or anything like that. Okay. So. This is obviously the front lawn of the house. This is, most people when they come to the gardens nowadays, they're actually coming into the back of the, of the property because the front of the property is down ahead of us and you would come up this driveway to the house. So this is how you would arrive and we'll get down. You'll see a little bit easier to see it when we get down um, in a little bit. We're gonna walk over into the- Because the road was right there. That was the, the, that was the, the road, gate, so yeah. yeah. That's Such a beautiful day. This is one of my favorite sections of the gardens. Yes, this is a very different field than the, than the other ones. We're going to sort of work our way down. So at this point, actually, technically, you're stepping out from the sort of formal garden area. This originally was part of the cow pasture. Oh. Um, and then okay. it's starting around 2000 or so. This area sort of was, we expanded the gardening area in here, but this was not really a gardening area okay. until, until about 2000. So when Lee uh, uh, Taylor and Julian Glass lived in the house here, um, this was not part of their garden at all. Okay. So we have right here a lot of little bleeding heart all in bloom. Um, so bleeding heart's easy because you can see the shape of it. It looks like a heart that's sort of popped open with a little droplet of blood. But this is where you get into trouble when you start using common names because they all have different common names. And I once knew a lady who called this lady in a bathtub. <laughs> because if you turn it upside down and then you pull it apart, there's the lady, there's the lady in the bathtub. I've never seen that before. So, Yes, it's a, so common names are great because they tell you something fun about the plant, but they're not the same from, from person to person. And so, um, and this used for it to be a botanic name used to be Dicentra spectabilis, but they just reclassified it for some reason, and I can't remember what the current botanical name <laughs> is. So, so sometimes that can backfire because I this is what I used to argue all the time. This is what you need to learn botanical names for. So, and this is the water garden. So this is a really nice spot with all the Virginia bluebells starting to pop out. Um, mm, it's right. been blooming for, actually it's a little bit on the, just past its peak. Um, so it's been blooming pretty well for a good solid two weeks in here or so. So you're starting to see some of it pass, but up ahead, um, you're starting to see the Solomon seal starting to bloom. Mm -hmm. That a week ago, that was all just little nubs above the ground. This is all popped up and started blooming. Wow. So you have the Solomon seal, 
Yeah, but, um, and then up here, there's some really nice early spring ephemerals. Um, so you have the guinea hen flower right here. What is that again? The guinea hen flower. Guinea hen? Okay. Yep, the fritillaria. And um, so you have that. Right behind it is a brunner called Jack Frost. Oh, yeah. Um, False forget me not. Let me put it in the light. Then you have um, the trout lilies. And they make a nice combination with the uh, um, the Virginia bluebells. It's always a nice combination. This is um, a cultivar, so it's a little bit bigger than the native trout lilies. Native trout lilies are only going to be about that big. Um, and you can see some umbrella plant coming up in the back. It's good. Just mm -hmm. the leaves are starting to pop open. Yep. So this is a fun place for a lot of early spring flowering plants. Um, Kind of hard Beautiful. to see in here with the, um, we do have a whole bunch of, guys. we just restocked it with the golden mountain trout in here. Um, oh yeah, okay. So you, kind of hard to see, I, I would imagine, for your viewers. Um, so I can kind of see had, in the... Historically we've had a lot of golden mountain trout in here. And then of course there are eagles in the, um, that live on the, just beyond the far side of the property over off of Merriman's Lane. Okay. And they know about the trout. Pond here. <laughs> they know about our rainbow trout in our headwaters, and they have come and cleaned this out twice now. So easy snack. When they first built their nest several years ago, it took them about, I think it was about two years to clean out this pond because wow. we had about 25, 30 trout in here, and they tend to do it when we're closed in the winter time. Is when they're more active. You see them. I would come in here and I'd see them up on this branch right here, just, just sitting here waiting down. for a trout to come close to the surface. Um, so. They would come, and so we restocked about two years ago, and the trout lasted about 18 months before they cleaned us out again. So we have restocked again about um, about a month ago. We put new trout in, so these seem to be staying. Okay, I think we've lost one or two already, though. So don't put anything rare in there. No. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. And people that. often offer uh, certain fish, and I say, not unless you want it to be uh, food. <laughs> Which direction are we going to go? We're going to go down this back this way. To the All right, I'll let you. Nice uh, tulip magnolia. Yes. We just saw some uh, magnolias the other day at Blandy. This is the Asian garden, um, so you can see a variety of uh, Asian influences, some Chinese, some Japanese. Um, it is not a particular specific style. Um, so we do have the Japanese maples and some little Japanese lanterns, but then we have sort of the Chinese tea house and the little arch bridge and the moon gate over here. Sculptures that are Chinese and Japanese, so it was just sort of... Um, just sort of their hodgepodge of desires of different things to sort of blend together, but it doesn't follow any particular Asian gardening style. Okay. But it, you see very few flowering plants in here. And we have a nice resident yep. cup duck couple. You're all right. You're all right. Ah, I've never been through here before. So we, this is a project we were working on this past winter, which is the bamboo grove. Oh, cool. Um, so, there was a small garden here originally, and um, when Lee Taylor died in 2000, uh, the garden staff was very small, and they, the decision was made not to maintain this area anymore, so the bamboo sort of took over. It will do um, that. So, we have done an effort to sort of reclaim it a little bit, and created over the past, well, two, last, a year and a half ago, we started clearing some in here, and then this past winter, uh, with the help of quite a few very um, hardy volunteers, did a lot of clearing to create these little trails through here, cleaning out a lot of the dead. You can see like for over here, there's really bad, thick, dense dead. All of this was like that. Wow. So we had to pull out all the dead bamboo, years of dead bamboo, plus all the new growing bamboo, clean it up, and then sort of clear out some trails through here. So we have a couple of different routes through here. We added in the, the lion this past um, February. 
Um, so this is a public first, right? This pe the public hasn't been able to come in here. Yet? This will be a public first. Okay, yes, when we of. open it up, we plan on opening it uh, <laughs> April one, but that didn't work. Well, cool. Um, All right. Well, here's so, well, the exclusive so look. This right. is town run. Oh, it is. This is town run. This is town run. Starts up on our property. We'll start up there in a minute, and we'll, it comes down through here, goes through the wetlands, and then goes through the town the center of Winchester. Wow. So the headwaters of town run is on our property. So this is town run. That's that's um, crazy. So you, you can uh, come see here. You can put a key out. We have a better view for the wetlands over here on the other trail. This is just transporting here. Like, I just feel transported to a. It's so. It just kind of engulfs you. Huh. So here it is. Again, Town Run, you can see flowing all the way over. That's the Wellspring building over there. Um, and so this is where our new trail system will come through. If you look, you can see some flags waving in the wind. Uh, there's some stakes with the pink flags. That's where the boardwalk is going to be. Nice. So there's going to be a boardwalk that connects up to Amherst Street, and there's a big circular loop boardwalk across the water, and then it will be the start of the trail that will go up through the property. Nice. Um, so that area will be open. This is part of the admissions garden, but that area um, it will be free and open to the public. So you can come here and you can watch people as they wander through. Very cool. So, again, another little area we've created sort of fun little playhouses for people to um, see. So you have this sort of maze of class that we'll just run through. Um, cool. but, and we'll gradually finish clearing out the worst of the dead in the next year or two. This is an ongoing project. Like every right. gardening project, nothing is ever done all at once. These are live growing, <laughs> and uh, some of them will die out, and we'll just gradually prune them out, but we'll get more popping up. By clearing all this out, we'll probably within another year or two see a lot more popping up in here, and it will become okay. a little thicker in there. Um, so the bamboo is a grass, right? Isn't it a isn't yes. it technically grass? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So hmm. and it just sort of runs through, and there's some more little viewing ports over there, and uh, so you can just sort of come and find it. It's just uh, it sort of dead ends right back in here, but this <laughs> little very cool. Um, it's a fun project. Yeah. It's an ongoing project as well. You can see we have all our other raw materials sitting over on the ground here. We Great. continue to weave more. But um never ending supply. Yeah. And this tree, by the way, all of this is ivy. That's why the tree fell over. I was going to ask what happened to this so tree. The tree, basically, the weight of the ivy dragged the tree down. Dragged the tree down. I've never seen that. That looks so. So all of this is English ivy. There's the tree. It's a pine tree underneath. You can see right oh, there. Oh, it's pine. Okay. So. Wow. All right. Cool. We're going to come right back up here. We will pause and then. Um, we will come back and uh, join you all in just a minute. Okay. Uh, and the uh, other part of the uh, other part of the uh, the section. Here we go.